And hi, everybody. Once again, DJ Yokely with you here for another Coach's Corner. This time, it's the brand new ballistics manager joining me at this time, Chris Costantino. Coach, you've been around the uh, scene park for a long time. You've seen a lot of baseball at a lot of different stages. Ballistic, the new team in town. Talk to me about uh, what you guys, who you guys are and what you're all about. Yeah, basically, we uh, you know just got this 10th franchise. Um, we actually tried to get it two years ago, and they said, we want to give you another year to prepare, which was fine. So that's why they were down to nine last year. But now that we're all set, I mean, it was it was crazy how everything came together. Like, we had one tryout, and I'd say, like, my core nucleus of position players was already together after one tryout. I think I had, like, 16 kids already that were excited to come over. So, I mean, it came together really quick. It was kind of incredible perfect storm type deal so what is it like to build a team from scratch really i mean do you you were able to recruit a little bit uh you were able to see some of the the players that you wanted to and, and build um kind of your dream team so to speak yeah. what's that like yeah i mean basically last year you know i had to take a year off of coaching just because if i coached juice another year it would have been a conflict of interest so you know i spent that year as an official scorer and then i also scouted some games and I made a list and, you know, picked out the kids I wanted. And, you know, after the NABF was over and we were allowed to contact kids, you know, I started calling them and trying to get them on the team. So Now what's interesting is there hasn't been a lot of success with, with new teams in the B League. When, when they first come in, uh, I don't want to say they're pushovers, but there's a, there's a level that there, of adjustment needed. You come in, you've got some kids that have been in the B League. you got some kids that are going to go up and down for you throughout the, the year from 16 and 18. But you've got a nice little uh, kind of all-star cast that you've put together. Are you feeling like you can be competitive pretty quickly? Yeah, I mean, I'll just say right now, I, I think we're going to be a playoff team. And I know some people will say, yeah, they're an expansion team. That'll be an easy win. We're going to be pushovers and – that's not the case. We got, you know, seven kids going on to play college at the D, at the D2 level, the D3 level, and the junior college level. And they're, they're some good players. So we, we got some guys for sure. So let's so, show the cards a little bit here. What's in the cupboard? What are the familiar faces? Who are the familiar faces that we're going to see uh, a week from Sunday at Scene Park? Um, you're going to see um, kids like Kobe Zepko, Dustin Horn, Cam Calderero, uh, Bryce Smith. Those were the kids, you know, that were on that um, Creekside 16U team last year. Isaac Schleich is another one. We'll be counting on him for some big innings this year. And, um, yeah, and then, you know, it's some a mix of some new kids and some old kids and uh, kids from, like, the 16U level. We got um, Anthony Koulianis, who you know, played last year for the Avalanche, who was a really good hitter, who just needs to be – the right system and uh, yeah we got a, a good cast of characters and they're all it's crazy how they mesh together so well they are very very close it's it's crazy they're talking all the time in the group chat and it's yeah they, it's kind of cool to see i was i was actually just going to ask you that is this a team that is going to gel quickly and and really turn into you know all hands on deck for ballistic or are you going to have to do some cultural changes to make sure that these guys uh, kind of feel a feeling out process, especially with COVID that's got to be tough, but it sounds to me like these guys are gelling pretty quick, huh? Yeah, they, um, I'd say after a couple of fall games last year, they were super close and, you know, some of them knew each other from like their Mill Creek days. So um, there was ties from that. Some, you know, played against each other in the Whippeal and PA. So they're, um, they all knew each other coming in and then this group, you know, just kind of gelled together very quickly. It was, it was cool to see. It's, it's, it's difficult sometimes with the social distancing because they're so close to try and keep them apart, but right. you know, it's, it's, it's cool to see. It is. So here's a big one for me. Uh, you've got a chance to, to really go out and get some guys and, and, and bring this 10th team in. Is there, are there any new faces that we're going to see at scene park that you're excited to, uh, to kind of show the world about? Yeah. Um, you're going to see Connor McSparren. He's going to Alderson Broadus. You're going to see Kevin Schott, who's going to um, Gannon. And then you're going to see Miguel Torrenega, who is going to Point Park. Um, guys like that. And you have um, other guys like Anthony Monaco, who came over with us. Um, 
and Sam Basso as well, who was a 16U player last year, who this will be his first year at Big B. When you're looking for players, what are you looking for? I mean, just guys that pass the eye test? Are you looking for referrals? What are you looking for as you start a new franchise? I mean, I'm looking at, you know, their stats um, as well as the eye test. You know, for hitters, you know, their average, um, their OPS, stuff like that. Um, and the nice thing is about being sponsored by All-Star is um, we take them into All-Star. We have hit tracks there, which gives us, advanced metrics like launch angle exit velocity and also rap soto as well so you know we can see which kids spin the ball better than others and that kind of um that helps me make you know my decisions as well and you know obviously watch them play games now you're one of the younger coaches in the league uh that can be a disadvantage to many but i think you kind of take that as a, a chip on your shoulder and you want to prove some people wrong uh you're surrounding yourself with a lot of great coaches talk about the assistance that you've brought to the table at all levels of ballistic. Yeah. Um, Rick Schleich, first and foremost, um, he comes to mind. He's going to help me out with big B as well. And he also is coaching our little B team. The program could not function as well as it does without him. He is a, you know, super important. I can't say enough good things about that guy. He's uh, he's awesome. So, I mean, he's, he's fantastic. And then we have Don Vital and then Tom, um, Tom Ehrman as well at the 16 year level who are, you know, they're good guys and they know baseball. You've been an assistant for many years. What are some of the, the traits that you've learned as an assistant coach that's going to help you manage the big B team? Um, I mean, it's just being around the game. I learned so much from juice and I am so grateful for that. Those four years, he gave me my first chance to coach, but I mean, you kind of see what goes into decisions and stuff like that. And, you know, you see the things that he does, the things that I would have done, and a lot of th the times they're the same. But, you know, it's it it kind of makes this year easier just because I've seen it all. I mean, I went to California with that group. Uh, I think we were like three NABF World Series, something like that. So, I mean, and we have a bunch of guys in college from that four-year stretch. Two of them are probably going to get drafted. So, I mean, it, it was, you know, a great learning experience. And, I think that's why I'm ready. Some guys will just kind of jump in with no experience whatsoever in the league. And then there's a big learning curve, but I mean, I'm going to have my growing pains. I know that. And, you know, so is the team, but we have a good mix of, you know, 18 and 17 year olds and, you know, some 16 year olds as well. Well, it's going to be cannons holstered because I heard yesterday on uh, running point on YSN that if you get tossed, it's 10 game suspension. It sounds like, so you yeah. got to make within reason, you got to make sure that, uh, the, the young buck of all of them kind of stays within the lines. Uh, kind of <laughs> one of those standpoints, are you a fiery manager? What, what's your management style? I mean, I'm pretty calm, cool and collected because I learned it from my playing career, like that you can't let emotions get the better of you. You end up making more mistakes. So I'm not worried about getting ejected and stuff. I mean, there's stuff like if it was egregious, yeah, but this year, you know, you can't. So it's just, yeah, I'm a player's manager, I guess is what I would classify myself as. Terry I love Ferguson. hearing that. Love hearing that. There's, uh, there, you've got some great players that, uh, that you'll be able to kind of throw your arm around and teach them a thing or two. This year's going to be interesting, Chris. When you look around the league, when you look around the country, there's a lot of restrictions. Baseball is going to be played a little bit different, and it's going to be a little bit different, not only outside the lines, but inside the lines. What do you feel is going to be one of the biggest challenges for you of all these differences that uh, you, you're ha going to have to be faced with? I mean, I think the biggest thing is like that, you know, we can't talk to our team like in a group. So in between innings or after the game as well, I mean, that's that's a huge, huge difference. And, like, obviously the no-touch rule and stuff like that, it's just going to take some getting used to. But um, it, with some of the other ones about, you know, the defense providing the ball, you know, when they're out on the field, we've kind of gotten used to that already. But, yeah, I think just talking to the kids in, in a group setting, you can't do that. So, I mean, I'm gonna they're going to have their phone on them and – you know, if we have to talk after the game, we're going to do it via Zoom or FaceTime or, you know, whatever we have to do. So that's going to be different for sure. Being part of the Juice coaching tree, uh, is the time limit going to be a problem for for you as much as it, we, we all think it's probably going to be an issue for Juice? No, I don't think it will for me. Um, do you like that rule? 
No, no. Okay. I, I don't like it at all, but it is what it is. I just, I told my players that, and they were saying big B games averaged an hour and 51 minutes. I'm like, look, we play good defense. We catch the ball. We score three or four runs. We're going to win with our pitching. So it's, I think we'll be okay in that respect as long as we play a clean defensive game. From the other side of this, what's the excitement level for your squad? I mean, you guys are out to, to prove people wrong at, at first and foremost. Uh, talk to me about you know how excited your team is and you are for a week from Sunday. Um, massively excited. I, you know, they were kind of bummed out a little bit, you know, when all the national tournaments got canceled. But you know, it is what it is. But then you know, our focus turns on to the league and winning it, and they're they're super excited. Um, a lot of them played in the NABF World Series last year at 16U, so they have a chip on their shoulder. You know, they wish they could have won that. So now with those kids and then the other group of kids coming in, you know, some of the 18-year-olds, you know, I, we got a shot to be a playoff team and make a deep playoff run. I mean, we're that's kind of the goal from day one. I told them that if, you know, you're not here to make the playoffs and make a deep run, um, you know, this this isn't the place for you. That's pretty awesome, man. You look about the short season that you're going to be faced with. Does that do anything to you, to you personally, like from a mental standpoint, from the competitive balance of the league? I mean, having less games to play, you're going to have to win more games or lose less games, I guess is the best way to put it. But we're looking at ties. We're looking at, you know, when you look at the standings at the end of 18 games, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it is. Um, every game is just so important now. I mean, you can't you can't give away any games. I mean, you got to get those top two seeds for the playoffs so you get a bye. If you don't get that bye, then you know your pitching is really stretched thin after the first first round of playoffs. So it just makes every game super important. And I mean, it, that's that's really the biggest thing. You can't afford to give away games at all. We've talked about you being the tenth team. Let's talk about being the perfect tenth team. The Class B League is one of the best leagues in the entire area, let alone probably the state. Uh, when you look at this, this is a very special group uh, of players, an elite group of, of baseball players. What does it mean to you to be included in that 10th group and to be the manager of them? Uh, it, it means a lot. I mean, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you know, Jim Putko for giving me the opportunity. He's you know been a great sponsor and – it's nice to have him around in the wintertime working with the hitters. So, I mean, it's that's been great. That's improved the offense tenfold. And, you know, playing in the league myself and then going to college, coming back and coaching in it, I mean, it's just awesome to be a manager because there's only 10 of these big B jobs, and I'm one of the 10. It's, it's, it's great. I mean, I can't thank Jim Putko enough and even Juice for just giving me a chance coaching four or five years ago after my career ended. Is this the first ever head coaching job, head managing job of, of a team for you, or, or have you been you know been in this rodeo before? Um, I've I've had some head coaching jobs in like fall ball and stuff like that. I mean, so that doesn't really count because there's really not a lot on the line there. But I mean, there was some instances when I was with Nightline that um, I had to be the manager, and it was during some um, the Palomino Regional. So there was I. I was used to that, and that was a lot of pressure doing that on my own. So I think I'm pretty well prepared for it. Do you have any nerves going right now as you, as you guys creep towards the season, or, or is this just old hat for you now? I'm not nervous. Um, a couple of months ago, I was just because some guys were getting hurt. But, you know, everybody's healthy now. So, I mean, I'm yeah, I'm not nervous whatsoever. I think we'll be you know, a good team. So, yeah, it's it's, it's another day. All right, finish this sentence for me, and I'll let you go. My team will be successful if? We score three runs a game and play clean defense. <laughs> Such a coach speak. You're, you're ready to go, Chris. Proud of you, man. Looking forward to, uh, to catching up with you each week. We appreciate the time, and we look forward to, uh, to next week's Coach's Corner right before uh, the opening day. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Chris. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, man. Thanks.